It is 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. You're inside brunch at 107.5 uh, music. 107.7, I keep doing that. 107.7 music for life. It is great to have you with us. And uh, we are talking the issues that we know affect you. One of the things you found out as we dealt with campaign finance uh, before is that we are not looking at what are the so-called sexy topics. We're looking for context. We're looking for conversation. We moved into the Trinidad and Bago Football Association to deal with what has, what's relevant to you, what you need to know. And uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the theme of that relevance, we have our next guest, Mr. David Abdullah. Uh, Shamin? Uh, David, we, good morning and welcome to morning, our man. studios for the first time. Yes, thanks. Um, and we have the, the, the caption or the, 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 the headline that we put on this discussion is MSG blowing in the wind, quest <laughs> blowing with the wind, <laughs> question mark, is with or go with, you know, the MSG because, sure. and I want to take this discussion back to five years ago. Um, the, when you were at the forefront of the, um, People's Democracy Movement it was, right. and the protest against the property tax, which engaged you eventually with the People's Partnership government, yeah? And, and then you, you went on, you stayed for a while, you got disgruntled and you left, and then you are looking different quarters right now. So let's go back to the whole property tax issue. Where is that? Because people don't talk about it anymore. Have you dropped it? Where is that? What's And we move from there. Okay, well, before that, let me just say um, thanks for having me. Good to see some Thank old you. friends. Um, Charmaine, of course, I've, you know, I haven't seen for a while. She remember it was five years ago. I didn't remember. That's a long time. Yeah, <laughs> it was five years uh, ago. We were not in politics yeah. a week is a long I time. I was standing in yeah, today. Yeah, one. Yeah. And really, you know, great to see you. Good you to see on you, Facebook good over, see. over a period and so on. Uh, you, you did an interview with me when you were in New York some That's right. a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. Um, but I remember many, many moons ago, you know, the old Radio Trinidad, 7.30, AM as it was in those Are you days. trying to expose me? <laughs> trying to bust me? <laughs> 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 but you know, but those, those are interesting yep. times oh as well. Yes, so they were it's, it's good to be mm -hmm. on air with, with both of you all. Okay, let's fa fast forward, go backwards if you want to, to five years ago. Yes, December um, 20, 2009, mm -hmm. um, and I was arrested, I think, on the 18th of December, um, and, or the 17th, one of those dates there. Uh, and um, the parliament was debating the property tax, as mm -hmm. it was popularly called, and um, we were, I was arrested, um, and a number of, of colleagues were, were, were brutalized by the police, were beaten by the police, and so on. Um, and that, of course, was one of the many um, you know, moments politically where people in the country were expressing their disagreement in mm -hmm. very strong ways with the Patrick Manning government because the, the, the view was that the Manning government had become um, far too autocratic, far um, not listening to the people, engaged in a policy direction mm -hmm. that did not address fundamentally the problems that people were having in their communities mm -hmm. around roads and water and housing and, and so many other things like that, the crisis in the healthcare sector and, and was intent on development, a development paradigm or development concept which was about constructing, you know, mega projects, big buildings, Taruba Stadium, Napa, Sapa, the, the waterfront, and so on. Mm -hmm. All of these projects, which um, people could not make any direct connection with in terms of their standard of living, their quality of life, um, and that the mining government was also intent on undermining the public service. Hence, the establishment of a revenue authority which mm -hmm. was part of the legislation with respect to the property tax and so on, establishing a revenue authority and therefore getting rid of Board of Inland Revenue and customs. And then on the other hand, um, other areas of undermining the public service through contract work, through the establishment of special purpose companies to do the work that would normally be done by the public service and therefore get around public procurement legislation, the mm -hmm. topic you're dealing with, discussing with Margaret Rose, using um, special purpose companies like Unicot, of course Unicot is the most infamous or famous of them all, we call the heart and so mm -hmm. on, but um, the, which companies did not fall under the requirements of the Central Tenders Board and which would establish their own tender rules and procedures and therefore would expend taxpayers' money off book, in other words, not being accountable to the parliament through, the mi through, through government uh, ministries and, and line ministers and so on. So that was the, the general mood of the country. Um, and that resulted in, and Phaeton was in the forefront, uh, that was the, the, the trade union group that I was leading, mm -hmm. um, Federation of Independent Trade Unions and NGOs, um, and Phaeton was in the forefront of that protest movement. We had begun with high food prices, a sustained campaign around high food prices before that, 
and, and took up more general issues and that led to the People's Democracy in October of um, 2009 and then into the property tax protests and then and then Phaeton was was um, invited by then leader of the opposition newly elected in in March of 2010 Kamala Prasad the assessor to meet with her and a small team um, and we met with her at the OGQ headquarters and then she extended an invitation to me as president of Phaeton to speak at a rally which she was organizing in Safe Park in Shogwanas, um, which was held um, at the end of March. I don't mm -hmm. remember the exact date. Farmers' crops were bulldozed in Das Trace and Enterprise and on Pineapple Smith lands up in, up in Aruka, Maloney, Maloney area. Mm -hmm. And so that was one clear case. And um, interestingly, then Minister of Agriculture, Vassam Barrett, um, he himself expressed this me about it. I was part of a demonstration in solidarity with the farmers. That was one instance. So I was still a member of the government. I was a senator. There was the issue of the 5% cap on, on salary um, that in terms of the collective agreements that were being negotiated by the state, um, both as, as state enterprises and as government um, CPO and so on. And of course, the trade unions opposed the imposition of of a, a, of a cap. Mm -hmm. um, that was another issue. And I demonstrated with trade unions and so on and spoke at rallies against that and spoke in caucuses against it and so on. In fact, I had a very heated exchange with then Minister Dukaran about that. Um, there was the issue of the state of emergency. The MSJ made a public statement calling for the regulations to the state of emergency to be amended because if the reason, quote unquote, for the state of emergency was to deal with some gang and drug and, and crime, murders and so on. There was no reason mm -hmm. to have in the regulations the banning of public meetings yes. and demonstrations and so on, which have, have, have civic activities having nothing to do with criminal activities. 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 But, but th they didn't take that on. And there were other, other things. Corruption, major. The Faisabad Declaration um, put forward very clear principles and values honesty, no politicization of the state sector and the public service, and that no discrimination. Mm -hmm. All of those things were happening. People were losing their jobs because they were perceived to be PNM and so on. On what basis? Perhaps race only. And I thank you and Charmin for allowing me to indulge in that because there are many who would ask the questions, well, did you make a mistake then and you're coming back to us this time asking us to, 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 to pay attention when you made a bad judgment, but I think you just clarified and that's the reason I ask you to elaborate on what was the reason that you left out. Yeah, I mean, we went in and we went in on the basis of agreed policy positions. Mm -hmm. And um, when we realized that we couldn't hold the UNC to account on those policy positions, we left. Mm -hmm. um, now, mistakes were made, I think, by not just MSJ. I think that both Mr. Dukran and Mr. McLeod, who were the leaders of the um, COP and the MSJ, respectively, at the mm -hmm. time, and m members of the cabinet, could have, in the very early days, put their foot down and ensured that the, the government did not go by way of excess mm -hmm. and so on. And I mm -hmm. have countless examples I could give you of that, but you know, time wouldn't permit. But, mm -hmm. but they, they allowed latitude. And you know the old saying, once you give an inch, they take a mm -hmm. mile. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the UNC felt, and the corrupt elements within the UNC felt that, that they, there was nobody to rein them in, and therefore they started running like horses faster and faster. You either bend a tree or you have to cut it down. That's what we are saying. Uh -huh. But yeah. David, yeah, um, but therefore you have answered what she gave as your um, as her parting shot in response to your parting shot. She says that you were, you remain trapped in isolationist thinking. You cannot negotiate governments like governance like a labor union leader representing the interests of only one group. Were you doing that? Not at all. If you're talking about corruption, that doesn't deal with workers. One group. <laughs> one group. You're mm -hmm. dealing now with, and, and Margaret Rosa thing dealt with that earlier. <laughs> you're dealing now with the um, stealing of taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. to benefit a greedy few. Mm -hmm. finances of the party, and so on, and so on, and so on. If you're dealing with um, the absence of constitution reform mm -hmm. in a significant mm -hmm. way, that doesn't, that's, that's general. Mm -hmm. So no, the issues that we put on the agenda were very broad-based, and it came directly from the manifesto and the fight about declaration. If you say you're not going to politicize the state enterprises and the, and the public service, um, and then people whose contracts um, came to an end, were not renewed, and a whole set of other people came in, mm -hmm. then that's something different. If you say, for example, why is this radio station, not, not this particular one, mm -hmm. why is radio station X 
and media house why getting advertisements when we perceive them to be PNM supported and the next day advertisements are pulled from ministries and state enterprises mm -hmm. you're discriminating yeah. um, and that is not what the country voted for in 2010 that is not what we were part of the partnership for. So mm -hmm. no, and, and I'll tell you, the Prime Minister actually did call me a couple of days after I left. Mm -hmm. Of course, she will say, because she said then, they will say, so I'll deny it. So she could deny it if she wants. <laughs> but I know that she called me and I suppose photo records could be tracked back to 2012. Um, and she called me to, to say, well, that I'm an idealist and she's a realist. But then we, if we don't dream, if we don't have ideals, then we settle for the dregs. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, and we are not about to settle for the dregs. And what would um on how dregs in terms of values, principles, vision of transformation? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. And where does that leave you with Earl McLeod, your comrade? I haven't decades. spoken to him for almost three years. Mm. Mm. The last time I spoke to him was on the twelfth of July, twenty twelve. I haven't had no word with him for you know for almost three years. He is not and has not been a member of the MSJ for many years. Um, even when he was. The, the leader, he, he didn't come to many meetings. He absented himself from more meetings than he attended. But, but more importantly, he, he has not been, he does not represent the MSJ in any form or fashion and has not done so from, from 2012. Well, you're now sitting at a table with Ramesh Lawrence Mirage and, and, and people whom you would have protested against and who you would have had reservations about previously, whom we all uh, as a nation would have had reservations about by their politics. And beyond that as well, um, which is which brings into the issue of credibility, which is why we put the headline um, on this is blowing with the wind. MSG is this, and then she described you as as being ambitious, which I don't agree, knowing your work um, in the social sector. But w where does that leave you? Um, are you going with with just because the PNM is the only alternative that you you're walking with them today, or? Can the MSG walk its own path and, and, and be relevant there? We are walking our own path. Um, we are part of the round table coming out of Section 34. I actually um, convened this broader grouping called the round table, which meets from time, excuse me, from time to time and so on, and engages in joint activities, joint actions. Mm -hmm. um, and the PNM is a member of the round table because quite clearly the issue of Section 34 was one which both the PNM, the MSJ, the trade unions, and other groups that are members of, of the round table um, all had a common position mm -hmm. on. So it's an issues-based um, network, if you wish. It is not a coalition. It is not an alliance. It does not. There's no pact between us and so on. Though Dr. Rowley and I do converse from time to time, not all the time, but we converse from time to time with respect to the round table. Mm -hmm. but you have to understand what the round table is. It is, it is a, 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 a network that comes together around specific issues of governance or problems of governance that are where we have a common position on. Now, for example, there was the March for Chagramas 2 um, on the, mm -hmm. the 9th of May, mm -hmm. where we walked from West Mall, just opposite West Mall, to Chagramas. And that was organized not by the round table, but by the Save Our Chagramas group. The MSJ is a member, the PNM is not a member of that. Mm -hmm. There are a number of other groups like the Emancipation mm -hmm. Sport Committee, um, the Black Caucus, the Takarigua Save Our Savannah group, and so on. Uh, so there, there are a number of the farmers, obviously Gua Road Farmers, the Chagramas, um, Chagramas Tenants Association, and other groups are members of this Save Our Chagramas group. Now, the PNM joined the march. Other people, Mr. Warner, <laughs> joined the march. Mm -hmm. um, Nicole Diagraphis and some members of AOI joined the march. And some citizens, so yes. Mm -hmm. and exactly, so it's an issue, and others can, can join in if they feel they could identify with there the issue. There is a degree of political maturity that um, you know the populace would expect of their leaders. I would expect you to speak to the Prime Minister if she called you or anybody or so, Mr. Manning or anybody else. At the end of the day, that, de that, that, that level of political maturity is something you expect anybody who's observing uh, uh, politics and try to understand that we're looking for a common Trinidad and Tobago will understand this. I, I, I want to go into an area that uh, the Prime Minister is saying, looking at the fortunes of Trinidad and Tobago, that we're not into a recession. You've been warning for a long time that we are not taking the necessary, uh, making the necessary adjustments uh, for an impending recession and what it will, the effect it will have on the, on the citizenry. Um, where is the disconnect here? Why is the PM saying we have nothing to worry about and you're saying, and, and, and what particular adjustments are you referring to when you say we need to have adjustments done now? Yeah, sure. Key question. 
Um, well, the Governor of the Central Bank did announce um, just a few days ago that for the first quarter of 2015, there was negative growth, um, which means that the, the, the pie shrank, right? Um, and it, it is going to shrink again in the second quarter mm -hmm. relative to the first one, given the fact that we have lower oil and gas prices, therefore we are generating less income as a country, and therefore mm -hmm. the pie is shrinking. That, that's the reality. Now, um, quite apart from the problem of loss of, of national income, because we, we're producing less value in terms of goods, mm -hmm. because oil and gas prices are down and so on, um, we also have the situation where government revenue is down, because the government, of course, budgeted initially in September last year for the 2015 period for an $80 oil price, mm -hmm. and they, they ratched that down to $45. So, mm -hmm. they, so government revenue is going to be down, um, and therefore the government has less money to spend on projects, which means now they're trying to cover that by selling some of the crown jewels. Mm -hmm. So some of the money that, the fact that the Minister of Finance could say he, he ran a small budget surplus and not a deficit is because they got an inflow of money that came out of Clico, the mm -hmm. sale of CL financial assets. Because you know, um, there was the sale by arbitration of the very valuable um, Methanol Holdings Limited company, very, very valuable company. Mm -hmm. And that went back to the government. So they got an inflow of cash of several billion US dollars and so on. So that helped them to balance the budget. But, and then they want to go now with this initial pr um, um, offer, share offer and so on with respect to Phoenix Park. Phoenix Park now so it's, it's a bad time to sell, where well we disagree with the sale in any case because it's a profitable company, but it's a bad time to sell because you don't sell when prices are low. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. prices are low, the value of your asset declines. Mm -hmm. And, and therefore, you, the price that you will get is a lower price than if the if this market is very buoyant. And as a fire sale then, but they want to sell because that will give them some more cash again mm -hmm. to finance a deficit. So it's like you having um, an income of $1,000 a month um, and you are paying um, some of your bills, um, but you don't pay all your bills at the end of the day and you have $5 left in your pocket at the end of the month, and you say, well, you know, I'm doing okay. I have a surplus of $5, but you have a surplus because you didn't pay mm -hmm. the light bill, mm -hmm. you didn't pay the phone bill, and so on. And therefore, if you had paid those bills, of, you couldn't because you'd be in debt. Mm -hmm. That's what the government is, has because mm -hmm. they're owing money, to, which is why they went back for this additional money recently to pay public servants and teachers and so on. But what, was it additional money or they were just moving around the money from the Ministry of Finance, wasn't that? Well, they're moving it around, but the question is where was the money originally allocated that mm -hmm. is now not going to get it? Um, and I know, don't know that we have all of those details. It may have been in the budget, in the document that was laid in Parliament, but, but those weren't provided. But what is going to happen is that ultimately the government's um, budget position is going to run into deficit given lower revenues from oil and gas and the levels of expenditure. But there's a third more crucial area, which is foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. And David Dolal White, who head of Republic Bank, made a statement last week, which was very telling. And he said that with lower oil and gas prices, we are bound to run into a foreign exchange problem because we are consuming as a country too much. Motor cars, mm -hmm. look at the malls, mm -hmm. look at um, people buying, you know, fast food. Every time you buy a box of chicken and chips from KFC, money goes out of China and Tobago because you have to pay the franchise, you know, people and Almost so on. Almost everything is a foreign Royalty. franchise, That's yeah. Right. So food import bill is going up. So all of these things, our consumption of foreign exchange mm -hmm. is huge. And when the, the, the flow of foreign exchange coming into the economy goes down, we're going to run into a balance of payments problems at some point in time, and then that is when the crunch is going to hit. Well, first of all, um, in terms of government expenditure, we propose a um, reduction of that point forty into San Fernando Highway, which is really two highways. Mm -hmm. In fact, we did a tour as a roundtable just a few days ago on Corpus Christi on Thursday. And um, significant sections of the controversial part of the highway, which is between Pinal and Mont Desir have not even been started. Mm -hmm. And we are saying it's unnecessary to start. That's very Scale expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the section between Debe and Pinal, um, they've put in a lot of, of, of soil on the swampy area and so on. But that, that could also be not as extensive as originally designed. Which run, that, that section that runs uh, um, parallel to the Mosquito Creek? Is that no, 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 no. This, no, th th this, this is between Debe 
and penal. So this is going um, in a number of through through the, the, the low lying areas um, in those communities in the back of penal and mm -hmm. so on. Um, so that is one area where we could reduce expenditure mm -hmm. quite clearly with the type of procurement that is going on and what we understand to be the level of kickbacks and so on. Um, we could save a lot of money if there's proper pro public procurement. Government advertising could be reduced in terms of all the ads in the newspapers, which is really part of the election campaign, mm -hmm. so that there are areas for reduction in government expenditure. Um, in terms of the country, as a country, we need to have a serious dialogue. This mm -hmm. is not about party in power. This is about country. We need to have a serious dialogue about the state of the economy. And, but unfortunately, the government has no moral authority to convene or initiate such a dialogue. Mm -hmm. So, but we need a dialogue so that as a country, we could begin to say, let us cut, begin to cut back on this consumption of foreign exchange. Let us increase our output of locally produced goods, um, and including food and so on, and ensure that we conserve foreign exchange. Let us provide economic incentives mm -hmm. to business people to earn foreign exchange. Let us encourage people to bring back into the country U.S. dollars that they are banking in the United States and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Let us have a real dialogue. Let us discuss the issue of productivity in the context of, of workers now um, having real power of decision-making at the workplace and transforming the relations of power at the workplace. Thank you very much for, for, yeah. for making that very clear, yes. Um, David, while you're speaking about let us bring back U.S. money into the country, um, I did use this opportunity to say that the BBC this morning unveiled that 4.8 million U.S. dollars was brought here into GTA supermarkets. I saw that report earlier this morning. <laughs> yeah, so, just so therefore yeah. a significant <laughs> amount. GTA supermarkets, yeah. a large chain in Trinidad, received 4.860 for four million eight hundred sixty thousand dollars from the accounts as yeah. the, uh, the money paid. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what all the facts are. What I suspect was going on um, is that quite clearly, a company like GTA, which is importing mm. and so on, wants egg, foreign yeah. exchange, Long and egg. and so, yeah. um, Mr. Warner probably had an arrangement with them to um, give them U.S. dollars. He got when BBC said he, they then gave him back TT dollars. TT dollars in and exchange. And, and so they are simply operated as a as a broker, which you know. Broker for want of a nicer word, yeah. yeah? In other, right. In other for words, want of a better word. No, right. Broker is a nice word, rather. Right. right. In other words, we don't know that JT was involved directly in, in in acts of corruption, but what they were clearly doing is is trans is um, um, giving exchanging TT dollars for US dollars. In other words, they were functioning as a bank, right? Um, Go and, further. And keep keep the yeah, discussion going, which yeah. takes you into and well, no, they were functioning as a bank, so they got US dollars, and then gave Warner TT dollars. No, what he then did with the TT dollars is what the key question is. Well, I do have laundry to do today, but go ahead. <laughs> that is the key question. But, um, for example, if you go into some, some stores and so on, you can pay a bill with U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then um, they may even give you back change in TT dollars, if, if depending, and so on. And then they use that U.S. dollars for whatever they want to use it for. So... The one would have to find out from the from the from the regulatory authorities, including the financial intelligence unit. Mm -hmm. That is where now the issue comes in. Whether FIU, um, the laws under the FIU, is in terms of our financial arrangements, mm -hmm. were being breached by JTA and or Mr. Warner. And, and I can't say that off the top of my head, and I don't want to make a categorical statement because I only saw the report this morning. Yeah, and none of us would want yeah. to would be able to say that, really, right? We just get that information from from the BBC. But I'm saying your analysis of the economy and all of that it, it goes with what's what's there on paper and and what's there. But we all know in Trinidad, and you do know, right? You've operated outside of the system for quite a number of years to be able to know that we have an underground economy in Trinidad mm, that's perhaps sure. stronger and more solid than our economy. But how how do you the reality of what Trinidad life is when you you how do you address that in politics? Because your politics seems so clean and clear cut. Well, the MSG has a very detailed policy document. Um, I have a copy of it. It's about 100 and something pages. We still have some sections to write, and mm -hmm. we did address that whole issue of white collar crime. And what we have to do is have a major assault on white-collar crime yes. at the level of um, the BIR, 
and customs and so on. For example, Chuck Blazer was caught initially not on FIFA issues, but on IRS issues. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they clearly squeezed him where it hurt on IRS, and then he gave up FIFA, right? That seems to me what, what happened. Um, and, and so if a business place has established, or there's a, a, a business place that, that mm. uh, you see the edifice and you know not much activities taking place there, mm -hmm. how did they uh, come by that? Now, the Proceeds of Crime Act actually provide for you to seize the assets of someone Not if the they can't mm -hmm. prove how they got it. That is the co uh, almost like the Capone model. It has been used for, for many precisely, years. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. Taxes, similarly, people not paying taxes. And I had a conversation with someone um, who, you know, is in a position of serious authority where this comes in, where this, where this, where this um, is, is and said, well, why don't you go after all these people? Mm -hmm. And his response was, well, you know, those are the people who, business people who fund the party. So if we go after them for taxes, they so would make the country. So much we found out that the MSJ is not blowing with the wind. They're <laughs> firmly <laughs> grounded in the ideology activism, isn't mm. it, David? Yes, and fighting for social justice. Congratulations on yeah. that. And as we close off brunch today, we've had Margaret Rose opening our program, Attorney Margaret Rose, and her message is get up, stand up, ask your candidate where he's getting his money from as we move painfully slowly towards campaign finance reform and the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association Raymond Timkey football after Jack Warner and he says they're actually on the road to reforming that association mm -hmm.